my people. I'm hoping you're liking the new setup. That's about to change. I'm going to go the whole green screen adventure. So take a good long look at these bottles behind me because it's likely to be the last you're going to see of them. So tonight I'm going to engage in a promised contradiction. I'm going to go and hit a navy from a town that is a long way away from anything resembling a reasonable body of salt water. Well, the only bottle, the only salt water in where I'm, this gin comes from would actually be in someone's glass. Okay, or perhaps when they put a bit of salt in the pot to boil a pasta. So I'm talking about the um, little town of Millowa up in Victoria's northeast, where, as you've been known, because you're paying attention to all my videos and watching them all quite religiously, um, I went and visited Hurdle Creek. I did the Geneva last week. And a big shout out to the um, the guy at Smith's who um, sent me a quite detailed exploration as to exactly why Simon hadn't produced a true Geneva in that bottle because it turns out that Geneva is actually domain protected. Um, from To the guy Smiths, I forget your name, I looked at you late at night, um, from the bottom of all Australians' livers, I'm deeply sorry for not getting it right. And I think Simon's even sorrow because, well, it's, well, Simon's Geneva. It's as simple as that. So I'm going back to um, Hurdle Creek still, which is in a beautiful little tin shed a long way down um, a country lane past a couple of very well-known wineries. And I'm hitting the Powder Monkey. I'm going to go to the Powder Monkey, people. We're going to hear the sound of happiness. I'm moving away from the camera because I'm actually getting technical and setting up a mic. The smell of happiness um strap them down the, these guys have used aniseed metal in this um sorry sorry chris point philip distillery his um interview should be coming out you if it hasn't come out but home i put this baby to wear and i think it will have you got to go and see my award-winning stunning factually correct um interview with chris from port philip distillery where i ask the difficult questions and put him under the thumbtacks. Go and, go and watch the interview, even if you, it's coming out in six months now from now. So I'm going to do the civilized thing and pour some of this into a glass and put the sound of happiness back in. So this would be the, if the sound of happiness is pulling a cork out, then the sight of unhappiness would be putting the cork back in. So I'm going to spill this around. Now, Simon will tell me that there are three different types of myrtle in this baby. There's lemon myrtle, there's aniseed myrtle, and uh, cinnamon myrtle. Let's see if my nose is getting better. What is completely unescapable is this baby's 58%. I just had the back of my throat go whoomph with flame. Um, oh, I'm getting getting the cinnamon as I swash the last of this around my, um, my, my back of my tongue. The aniseed is quite straightforward. And for those of you who haven't been told it yet, I have a um, intolerance to fennel, okay? And fennel is in a seed. Um, and my darling wife, whenever we eat out Indian food, and I live in a suburb that's got a good Indian demographic, God bless it, and they produce delicious food, and I love my child, my darling wife is the one who goes up to the poor guy and says, does it have fennel or hing in it? And they go, yes, it does. And it's, yeah, she turns around with times with glee and rice and go, well, darling, you can't drink this. And the guy goes, hang on, how come I can't touch fennel? And this guy said, well, gives him migraines, puts him to bed. Not good. So the aniseed myrtle, um, I must admit, has me blinking at this, but I know it's not fennel because I spoke to Simon. I, yeah, I do my, my that thing beginning with R. God knows, too many letters and consonants in it. So it's, I can smell the cinnamon myrtle, I can, 
it, it's definitely there. There's Juniper forward. It's a full 80%. Um, I did my stop motion before. You can see the looshing on this baby. So as I chill this down with two ice cubes, it's got a wonderful milky color. This has been combined with, um, because I've got a new pack of them today. I'm drinking this with Fever Tree Mediterranean. Fever Tree Mediterranean, for those of you who are initiated or just haven't been paying attention because you've been drinking too much quality gin, um, brings out the citrus. And there's almost no citrus to bring out in this. It's, I'm tasting a lot of cinnamon, a lot of cinnamon, um, a fair bit of aniseed in it. Um, <clears throat> let's see what my professors will tell me about the write-up. And apart from the fact that Simon says, somewhere in the world it's gin time. Um, Simon, I'm looking at you. Um, the fact that I've got three kids and I've got a pair of twins. Trust me, cupcakes. Any time of the day in my house is gin time. Okay? There is no somewhere in the world... Well, if there is somewhere in the world, it's my house, okay? Um, straight up and down. So you drink, you review gins, yes. I have twins, so why do you drink so much? I thought you understood, I said I had twins. Um, small batch, yeah, Northeast Victoria, clean, dry, made from triticale, which is a grain I'm informed, because Simon actually uncommonly makes his own alcohol on the premises. And when I rocked up with my darling wife a couple of weekends ago, the joint smelled, smelled, smelled divine. I mean, I could just sit there and... <sighs> it's okay, Simon. I'm just practicing my breathing exercises, Simon. As I inhaled all the, <laughs> the alcohol fumes in his shed. Um, yeah, juniper, pink peppercorns, eucalyptus. It would be the strawberry gum that is outside the shed. If you don't believe that there's a thing such as strawberry, get yourself to Simon's um, still... Have a chat to Simon and see the big tree out the front of it. So this is the gun pe the powder monkey gin from Hurdle Creek Distillery. It is the second one that I have bought. I intend to get my tush back up to Simon to buy his chocolate stuff sometime mid-year. And I'm drinking really good quality gin from Victoria. Now, before I finish up, I'm going to be a bit radical. I'm going to start a campaign and I need your help. In Australia, a bottle of gin like this will be charged five and a half times the exercise of a bottle of wine. And I think that is killing a potential export industry. Australian gins are slaying them in the awards and we can't get off the ground because for every bottle, for every drink, shot a standard drink in a bottle of gin, you will pay a dollar ten in excise. Now, a bottle of wine, a glass of wine, will set you back a mere twenty cents. Is this fair? I think not. So stand by. I'm not doing reviews. I'm going to be out there rousing the rabble, or in my experience, of people who make and drink gin, do not say rabble. This is Odin. I'm about to be the revolutionary because I've hit the revolutionary powder monkey from Hurdle Creek. Still, I'll catch you around. And stay in, go and see that interview. It'll be amazing. I'll catch you. Bye. Go out and be, be naughty. Odin's orders.